That, I suspect, is what you were probably seeing. Oh yeah, that's seeing. what it looked like. Yes, yeah. that's that's the most common of the ones up here. Pearly wood. Pearly wood nymph, yeah. The, the difference between that and the uh, beautiful wood nymph, apparently, <laughs> is uh, wavy versus straight uh, PM. I'll give you a little spiel about what's going on here, why the mods are coming in, what mods are coming in, um, and then we have a few of the more interesting ones that we put in jars here just uh, so you can take a look at them to get a closer view of them. Um, so basically what's going on here is mobs at night uh, tend to use uh, signals from uh, the stars and the moon and lights and things like that in order to navigate. So if you are a moth and you are flying along at night and the moon happens to be to your left, if you want to continue flying in a straight line, you're just going to keep the moon to your left. Because as you know, if you're driving or walking, you can go for several miles and the moon sort of seems to follow you in the sky. Um, the problem for moths with artificial lights is as you walk past an artificial light, it doesn't tend to follow you. It just sort of uh, gets left behind. So if I'm a moth and I feel really smart and I want to go in a straight line and this light happens to be, say, to my right, um, the way I'm going to go in a straight line in my mind is I'm going to keep this moon to my right. So what would that entail? <laughs> I'm going to walk in a pattern sort of like this. Keeping it to my right. Must be going in a straight line. I think I've been here before, but I know I'm going in a straight line. I'm a smart little moth, etc., etc., which is why you see moths on your porch come in and do something like this and then spiral down and hit the ground. So these are very confused moths that you see up here. Um, they've been confused by the light. They're flying around. They hit the sheet. Um, the reason that we use a white sheet is that it uh, reflects light the best, of course, and so all of this light is just everywhere, and the moths have no idea what's going on. Some moths don't come into light, um, which is why the bait that he was talking about can also be useful. There are some species you will never get at bait because they just don't eat. There are some species you'll never get at light because maybe they're just too smart for that, um, but you will get them feeding at the bait. Um, the really difficult ones are the ones that don't come into either of those things. There are some species that are very, very uh, elusive because they don't come into any of the traditional methods of attraction. Um, so, the species of moths that you're going to see in any particular place is going to be reflective of the plants that are around because most moths tend to specialize as caterpillars on one particular plant species. Uh, so, the example, butterfly-wise, that everybody's heard of is the uh, monarch butterfly caterpillar, of course, feeds on what? Milkweed. Milkweed, right. So, you see milkweed, you say there could be monarch butterflies around here. Um, however, what you may not be aware of, or you may be aware of, is that literally any plant that you can pick out anywhere has some moth or butterfly probably that's associated with it, that has co-evolved with it and is able to eat the leaves or in some cases bore inside of the stems of that particular plant. So just as an example, the beautiful purple flowers right over there um, are fireweed. There is a gorgeous black and white and yellow moth called Langton's Forester moth that feeds on fireweed. You lose the fireweed, you lose the Langton's Forester. Um, raspberry has moths that feed on it. Goldenrod has moths that feed on it. Birch trees have moths that feed on it. Literally, like I said, any plant, even poison ivy, even st stinging nettle even has a butterfly that the caterpillars feed on, the red admiral butterfly. So all of these native plants are important because all of them are required in order to maintain the moth biodiversity. So as you look on here, um, if you uh, are able to identify the moths, you can pick out what plants must be around. So this moth right here is a pink shaded fern moth. Well, that was easy. There's ferns all over the place. You'll see one, two, three, there's quite a few of those on here. Um, some of the other moths that we've got in here. Uh, oh, well, this one is not a moth. Um, just as a reminder that other things come in as well. This is a wasp. Uh, it's an ichneumon wasp. Uh, anyone want to guess how many ichneumon wasp species are on the planet? 60,000. There are 60,000 species of ichneumon wasps. You can pass that around um, if you want. Just in the United States, um, there are 12,000 species of moths. Um, there are well over 100,000 worldwide. Um, compare that to birds, where there are about 10,000 species of birds on the whole planet. So the moths of North America, species-wise, outnumber all the birds in existence. Um, some other things that we have here. This is a pink-striped oakworm moth. Um, the pink-striped oakworm, as the name suggests, as a caterpillar, feeds on oak. Um, it has pink stripes, hence the name pink-striped oakworm. You can, can you see it this way? This is the spruce looper. Um, which obviously feeds on spruce. As a caterpillar, it is an inchworm. Inchworms are caterpillars. They do turn into moths. Has anyone ever heard an inchworm called a measuring worm? Mm -hmm. yeah. The reason that the uh, moth family gets its name geometrid moths is that geometrid means earth measurer. So they're named after the fact that the inchworms appear to be measuring the earth as they walk along. So that is a type of geometer moth. 
And here, I think these are very cool. This is a moth. Uh, I believe the common name for this one is maple callus borer. It, uh, the caterpillar bores into maple, red maple trees, which are common here. Um, the maple callus borer is an example of a wasp mimic. So it's a moth that's going to look like a wasp when you first look at it. It won't look like a moth, but it is a moth. If you look closely, it has scales, it comes from a caterpillar, and everything else about it is very moth. Here's another one that you've seen as a caterpillar, I'm sure. If you've seen the tents, the mm -hmm. tent caterpillars in the springtime, they form those tents, mm -hmm. uh, and the little fuzzy caterpillar with the white stripes are all over them. Mm -hmm. This little brown guy right here with the two white stripes on each wing, that's a tent caterpillar moth. How do you know so much about moths? I've just collected them for my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> fluttering around here is a type of Renia. Um, they belong to a family called litter moths because they actually just eat leaf litter. They'll eat any little dead thing laying around. Um, there is one, little, this will be the last one I mentioned, it's not found around here but I think these are just too cool. Um, there is one type of litter moth though that is extremely specific in the litter that it will consume. It actually uh, only feeds on a type of uh, fungus that grows on the dead litter and feces in gopher tortoise burrows. So, um, not only are moths dependent on plants, but there's an example of a moth that's called Idia gopheri, just named after the tortoise. Um, the moth is completely dependent on the turds from the tortoise, essentially. If the tortoises die, there's no more tortoise burrows, there's nowhere else for the, for the litter moths to feed. So, um, yeah, it's a particularly rare moth. I mean, it's almost never seen, but it exists. It's down there in Florida.